So if you have a Bible, you can go to Isaiah 60. I think it's a good place to start. It says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. Say, my light. Your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Why is the glory of the Lord evident upon our lives? Because this world is filled with darkness, and you are the light of the world. When Jesus comes in, he says, you are now the light of the world. A set is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So you have to understand when you read, Arise, shine, for your light is come. It means God has placed something in you for this world. Now, if God has placed you in this world for a reason, I want you to remove the idea of you need to live accordingly so that you can get to somewhere else when you die. That is not the plan of your life. Your plan for your life is to shine the light in this life. As long as your eyes are open right now and you look at me and you can shake your head, it means... You have the opportunity to live and to have the light of God in your life. So, His glory shall be seen upon you. Wow, that's good. And Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is a good one to start with. Lift up your eyes round and about you and see. Lift up your eyes and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to you. (laughs) <laughs> thy son shall come from afar, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then will you see and flow together, and your, heart, and your heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. Wow. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto you, and the multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedarians of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. And they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together unto thee, and the rams, and it carries on. Verse 8, who are these that fly as at light, and the doves to the window? Surely the owls shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from afar. Their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord your God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Now we talk about the the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just and we tend to sit down on our seats and wait for the wealth to come in. That's not how it works. God has blessed you with two hands, two feet, brains, two eyes, ears, a mouth so that you can speak, think, and do things. He has given you a gift of life so that you can enlarge, so that you can multiply. So God has given you a gift so that you can live and shine forth His glory. So if we look at the wealth that is laid up, it is laid up to glorify God, which is in you. It's not going to come when you sit and do nothing. See, God, Smith Wiggles will say it the best. If God doesn't, make, uh, if God doesn't move, I make him move. <laughs> I didn't say that. He said that. Because God moves with the movers. God works with someone that has faith. James says, show me your faith without works. What do you, can you accomplish with faith without works? Not faith without hints, faith without works. Because you have to apply it. So, ha, the glory of God is upon you. And the sons and strangers shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister unto you. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I had mercy on thee. Ha. God's favor is upon you. His mercy shines upon you. This morning, when, before we started, we prayed, and one thing always comes up for me. It says, every day, your mercies are new. Every day is a new gift of life. Every day, I can drink from new mercies of God. Every day, I can step in and know that His favor shines upon me. What else do I need <laughs> except Him? So therefore, wherefore? Because His favor is upon you. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually, and they shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought, for the nation and the kingdom will not serve thee, shall perish. Yo. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted, and the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. Hmm. 
Verse 14, thy sons also of them afflicted shall come bending unto thee, and all that has despised thee shall bow themselves down at the sole of thy feet, and they shall call you what? The city. Ha. City of the Lord. What is the city's name? Hmm. Zion. So you are the city of God. You have to understand that there is no holy temple that's going to be built one day and God's going to come down and everything's going to be restored in the east. It doesn't work like that. Acts 7 says God does not live in temples made with hands anymore, but he lives in you and me. Where his spirit is, is where he lives. So you are the abiding place of God. We're going to go into this today. You have to understand that you are the city of God. God has prepared you. Me? Yes, you. The important thing we have to understand is a city. So, city is not made of one house. City is not made of one dwelling place. So if you are a temple, a city cannot be made with one temple. See, God works together. He works in a body. So you are now the city of the Lord. Zion. Ha. That is our starting point. Then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 3. It says, Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a beautiful starting. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Just stop there for a second. You have to understand that the grace of God is given to you by Jesus Christ. So grace does not come from Jesus. It comes from God. But Jesus gives it to you. All right? That in everything you may be enriched by him in all utterances and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that in everything you are enriched, in everything, who? Everything implies everything, nothing is left out. In everything, you are enriched by Him. Enriched by who? By Christ. By Christ. Ha! Hallelujah. Okay, so you have been enriched in everything by him because of the grace of God. So Jesus made it possible for you to be enriched by God himself. We're just putting the picture together here quickly this morning. Grace has been given to you of God by Jesus Christ. So even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come behind in no gift. So why have you been enriched? So that you come behind in no gift. Okay. Stop there for a second. Let's go back to Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Gentiles and kings will come to the rising of your glory, for your light. Because in the time of darkness, where is the world going to look to? To the prince of darkness? No, they're going to look for light. If they see light, they're going to come to you. And for this reason, you are enriched in everything by Christ so that you come behind in no gift, so that the world comes to you. They may partake of the gift that is upon your life. So you are a gift to this world. The moment you accept Jesus and you step into a new kingdom, you become a gift to this world. Just as you have received the gift of grace, you become the gift of grace. Ah, that's beautiful. So who shall confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? So you have to understand there is a day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son Christ our Lord. Hmm. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak all the same thing. Whew. All right, that's a difficult one. So we need to speak the same thing. Hmm. 
The only way we will be able to speak the same thing is if we get the same information and if we listen to the same voice. See, our wonderful world of social media today has so many voices. We are influenced every single day with so many voices. What is the voice that we are listening to, that we are thinking upon, meditating upon, and then speaking? And what voice are we speaking? So we need to speak the same thing. What is the thing that we need to speak? And that there be no divisions amongst you, but be you perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Wow. All right. So let's go on to verse 20. It says, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God that by foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Why? Because there is nothing that you can do except believe and receive the fullness of life that he has promised you. There's no work that you can do. There's no price that you can pay to receive what he has given to you. This is a stumbling block and this is foolishness to the wisdom of this world. Because this world is do and get. Work hard, receive, and then you're already old, so just retire and enjoy the little bit that you have worked for. But in Christ, it is believe and receive life, and life more abundantly. So this is foolishness to the world. They won't understand this. Ah, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greece, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So Christ is the power. You. Not like Eskom's power. He is the real power. Christ is the power and wisdom of God. Wow. Okay, so we have been given grace of God through Jesus Christ. See, our whole life is to get back to the image that we were created in, the likeness that we were created in, and that is the likeness of God himself. So looking like something and acting like something doesn't always happen in the same moment. See, we may be formed in his image, but we have to have his voice in order to sound like him. We have to speak like him so that people can believe that it is him. So Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how not many wise men are after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. So if you don't have the biggest vocabulary or the greatest muscles, I saw my brother Stephen here, he left again. Is he at the back, Stephen? I want a demonstration. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't have to be the best. God doesn't call the best. He calls the available. God doesn't anoint the best. He anoints the available. God looks at the condition of your heart. See, you can be the best and have the best heart at the same time. God looks at your heart, not on the outside. Men, we do look on the outside. We have checklists, say, ah, Pietrus went to Bible school, he did this, oh, but look what he did here. Nah, he, he can't work for this job. God looks at you with all your faults, with all your mistakes, and he says, I have chosen you. I have called you. <laughs> so this morning, know that God loves you. He has chosen you with everything that you are. With all the shortcomings that you have, he sees you as perfect. Man, I love the body of Christ. There's flavor in it. Now, I, enjoy the, I enjoy a good dish of food, and I like mixing my flavors because it's nice. Just imagine you, you only eat one piece of meat on your plate, nothing else. 
it's a nice flavor, but eat that same piece of meat for three months every day. After a while, it gets bland. It loses interest. Now you only eat because your stomach is rumbly. You don't eat because of it's nice to eat. So we are flavorful. Hallelujah. That's why God didn't make us all the same. Just imagine that. Yo, who would be the standard for choosing that? Okay, so you see, not your calling, how not many wives, not many men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound those things which are mighty. And the base things of this world and the things which are despised hath God chosen. And the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glorify in his own presence. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorifies, let him glorify in the Lord only. Wow. So, <laughs> we have been given gifts. We have been given the power and the wisdom of God to be able to speak the same thing so that we come behind in no gift, that in, in everything we are enriched so that we can do all things so that the glory can go back to God. Let's jump back to Isaiah 60. It says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. But then go read Isaiah 60 up until the end, and then you find out that the glory that is upon you is again there to glorify the Father. So everything that we do brings back glory to God because He has given us all things. He has enriched us in everything, in all utterances, in all knowledge. <laughs> so all we need to do is step into Him and we can receive all the things. Hallelujah. So 1 Corinthians 2, ah, it's a wonderful one, this. It says in verse 2, For I determined to know anything amongst you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified, because he is the power and the wisdom of God. And why crucified? Go to John 16. Hmm. He says, It is good for you that I live, because if I live, I can send you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. You need to understand the Holy Spirit is right there with you right now. He is a real person. Do you ever feel the presence of God around you? It's the Holy Spirit. See, God is everything, but the Holy Spirit is our connection to God. Okay, okay. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. So our faith, hallelujah, your faith is important. It cannot stand in the wisdom of men. Why is that? Because the wisdom of men will fail you. If your faith stands in the wisdom of this world, sooner or later, it's going to fall. So our faith do not stand in the wisdom of men, but our faith stands, hallelujah, in the, sure. Okay, so our faith stands in the power of God. How be it, we speak wisdom amongst them that are perfect. Now verse nine, it says, but as the eye has not seen, or the ear has heard, neither has come up in the heart of men, the things which God has prepared for them that love them. So just pay attention to where we started off here. God has already prepared everything so you, that you may be enriched in all things. It is already prepared for you. You need to see it, hear it, and then it becomes yours. All the problems that you have, all the needs that needs to be met, everything has already been prepared for you. That is, that is how awesome God is. So let's go to... 2 Corinthians 3. Okay, 2 Corinthians 3, it says, uh, from verse 6. It says, I have planted Apollo's waters, but God gives the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God gives the increase. 
Now he that plants and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, and you are God's husbandry, and you are God's... Thank you, Yaku. You are God's... It's not your Bible, is so. So if I stop there and wait, then it means I'm asking, what are you seeing in front of you? You are God's... Hey. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. Did I say 2 Corinthians? I was testing your spirits. Okay, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. Do you see it now? And you are God's... Ah, there we go. We got three more. So you, what are you? You are God's building. You are a city. Of God, according to the grace of God which is given unto me, a wise master builder, and I have laid the foundation, and another builds thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. So you are God's building. But then he goes on and he says, huh, Christ is the foundation. I have laid the foundation, another builds thereon, and let every man take heed how he builds thereon. Take heed how you build. Okay. So you are God's building, but you need to take heed of how you build thereon. So God gives you to the world. He says, this is my son. He gives you as a gift to this world. A city of the Lord. A light to this world. A city that cannot be hidden. So you know you are a building of God. You are the city of God. But then you also have to take heed of how you build on this building of God. You, say me. me. You are a temple of the Most High. You are a building of God. So take heed how you build upon this building. Sure. Let every man take heed how he builds their own. For, no, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Oh, so we have a foundation. Can I get a hallelujah on that one? Amen. We have a foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Now you know what they say about a building is only as strong as? the foundation is weak, if the foundation is on, on, on a bad piece of land, the house will fall. Sooner or later, when the first earthquake comes in Stilfontaine, we have earthquakes. <laughs> the house shall fall. But our foundation is Christ. Now, if any man builds upon this foundation, now get this, our foundation is Christ. When you get saved, you are translated out of darkness into light. When you get saved, you are called into the inheritance. When you get saved, you are called into the Godhead. So that means you become the building of God. And if you are that, then it means your foundation has been laid. So if Christ is your foundation, that is the beginning part. The next step is there needs to be a building. You need to start building. This whole year, we started off this year with let us build. Everything has been supplied, equipped, but you also need to take the supplies, take the equipment, and start building. Every day of our lives is an opportunity to build. Okay, so what you can build upon this house, there is gold, silver, And then precious stones. Precious stones, man. It's precious stones. Okay. So we don't have to be very smart to understand that is the material that you should build with. Then you get hay, wood, stubble, and three pigs. (laughs) 
So those are the materials that you can build with. It is freely available to all. You choose what you want to build with. Now, if any man builds upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Behold, fire. <laughs> Your work, what you build with, will be manifested. Or shall we say, tested. Or revealed what you have been building with. You see, you can build a house and it looks nice on the outside, but then you come to the inside and you realize, but this is a, just a plaster job on the outside. There's no support on the inside. So only you know what you are building with sometimes. See, you can look at someone from the outside and you think this guy's got everything together, but he's been building with hay, wood, and stubble. And well, then you get another guy that doesn't know how to build, but he's got precious material. <laughs> the house looks a bit wonky, but he's building with precious material. That's why it's important for us to not look at one another and judge one another. Because only God knows what is on the inside of the heart of man. Only God knows what you are building with. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> See, when, when we hear fire, we, we already feel the pain. Because we have associate fire with hell and the devil. But that's not true. Look, this gospel is not to scare you out of hell into heaven. The gospel of Jesus and the gospel of this word, the word of life, is to show you that kingdom is now, that heaven is now. Look, the devil has already been defeated. The victory has already been won. Jesus already took the keys of death. Amen. He did not fail. He did not come second. He came first. So what is our gospel today? You need to work in order so that you miss hell. No. The price has already been paid. The grace of God has been given to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. Without Jesus Christ, you could not receive the grace of God. So it doesn't matter what you do, <laughs> there's nothing you would be able to do. But now, oh, yo, the fire will manifest, test, and reveal what materials you have been building with. Ah. Now, Instead of coming to me and, Pastor, please pray for me, it's, uh, things are rough, the fire is burning. <laughs> Be happy. Be happy because when the fire is there, you know that things are going to be removed from your life that should not be there. When things get tough, embrace it. Say, thank you, Father. Thank you for this time of testing. It's not something you want to hear from your pastor now. <laughs> you want me to pray for you for everything to work out perfectly well. Jesus didn't promise us everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be easy. He said, you are going to make it. He says, I am with you and you will be more than overcomers. He did say that. He didn't say it's going to be easy. But he said, I am with you. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to pray for fire today to fall on everyone. Hey, Pastor. <laughs> All right, so the next part of this verse, it says, The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. This is beautiful. Why can you be saved? Because the foundation is pure. The foundation cannot be removed. If you are a building of God, even if your life and your work gets destroyed, guess what? You can start building again. Because you have the foundation which is Christ. 
and this is why we have the cloud of witnesses. This is why we have the verses that says we can step into the things, the harvest that others have labored for. Now, if I look at this house, if I look at everything my father has done, his work is alive today as what it was when he was alive. Us sitting here is partaking of the labor that he has labored for. So his work still stands. The test and everything and the fire came, and guess what? The building still stands. The life still stands. The word still stands. Okay, verse 16. Know you not that you are the temple of God? So you are the temple of God. Wow. You are the temple of God and his spirit dwells in you. Ha, let's just do it there. Sorry, I'm still getting used to the board, so I'll get my spacing and everything sorted out in the next few months. <laughs> So you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If any man defiles the temple of God, him God shall destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So you have to understand, the building that we are building is the temple of God. So if you are God's building, you need to take heed of how you build, because God's Spirit needs to dwell inside of that building. You are supposed to host the Spirit of God. So let no man deceive himself. If any man amongst you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he takes the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. <laughs> For all things are yours. All things are yours. Wow. All. Things are mine, yes, yours. Now the world works in this way that it will create lust and desire things to make it their own. While we as sons of God, we stand here and say all things are ours. Why do I want to have possession of certain materials if life itself is mine? The kingdom is not a materialistic mindset. Okay, so all things are yours. Wow, that's, that's great. That's great. All right, so Corinthians talks about we are building. We need to take heed of how we build. <laughs> because everything that we need has already been provided for us, but we also have to know that there is going to come a thing called fire, which fire is used to purify. Gold is purified by fire. Silver is purified by fire. Precious stones is cleansed, of, I don't know, purified with fire. So hay is consumed by fire. Wood is consumed by fire. And stubble is consumed by fire. That's a difficult one. All right. Let, let me start reading something else before the fire starts falling right now. <laughs> Colossians, let's go to Colossians 2. Boom, boom, boom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 2, um, verse 4. I say this, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, joying and beholding your order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk in him. So as you have received Christ, you have been enriched everything by Christ. So as you have received Christ, nah, you, you with me? Walk. How did you receive him? It's not like Santa that you send a letter to the North Pole and <laughs> he sends you a letter back. 
is your heart was convicted by the Holy Spirit and you received Jesus Christ as your Lord. So as you have received him, so walk in him. How did you receive him? You opened your mouth and say, I believe. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. You had your first conversation with Jesus. And what happened is your life changed. Okay, so we kind of forget that part. Because that's how we received him. Now we have to walk as we have received him. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceits, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. Beware, lest any spoil you through philosophy. What is philosophy? It's a bunch of words and conversations that people have, and they try to pull you away from the grace that is given by God. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. So you are complete in him which is the power and the wisdom of God, and he is also the head of all principalities. I want you to pay attention to that verse in 6. It says, As you have therefore received Christ the Lord, so walk in him. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Now let's go on. In whom you are also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, in putting off the body of sin of flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in the baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead, and you are being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way by nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. <laughs> ah, so I want to hear nothing amongst you except Christ and him crucified. Why? Because that is our power to salvation. That is our price that has been paid so that we can step into the fullness which we need to step into. That has been our purpose. So, having that in mind, let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1. Hallelujah. One Peter one it says, "Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." Verse three, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, <laughs> to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Mm the last time when the trumpet blows who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation Christ is the power of God and our faith stands in the power of God all right wherein we greatly rejoice for now a season if need be you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold, <laughs> that perisheth, though it be tried by fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Ah, now you need to start seeing the picture. It says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, 
might be found unto the praise and the honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The appearing of Jesus Christ happens with a fire. Okay. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though we see him not, ye believe, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvations the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when he testified beforehand that the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed, and not unto themselves, but unto us that did minister the things, which are now reported unto you by them who have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, <laughs> which things the angels desired to look into. Now verse 13, we're getting to it now. We're getting to it now. Are you ready? Quickly shout, hallelujah. hallelujah. Just wake yourself up. If you feel drowsy, jump up and run. Because this is going to get good. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end, for the grace that is brought to you unto the revelation of Jesus Christ. So gird up the loins of your mind. <laughs> be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm just going to read it and how I see it. It says, gird up the loins of your mind that you are able to receive the grace of the revelation of Jesus Christ. You have to be able to have grace in order to receive Jesus Christ because his appearing is by revelation. Man, you need to change your mind. Instead of waiting for Jesus to come in and save the world, you need to understand that Jesus in you is going to change the world. <laughs> That's why I'm seeing it. Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When you find the revelation of Jesus Christ, man is going to blow your earthly mind. It's going to blow the wisdom that you are gathering together in this world. All the philosophers and all men's ideas means absolutely nothing at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of conversations. So as he who called you is holy, ha. Huh, Let's just remove this bit. So God is holy. As he has called you, is holy. Be holy. Be in what? In all your conversation. Ah, but pastor, why you say this this morning? <laughs> As he who called you, he who has enriched you, he who has made sure that you come behind no thing. As he who has called you is holy, so be holy. So how is he holy? In conversation. So be holy. <laughs> In all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be holy. For I am holy. Now Philippians 3, here to the end, we touched on this last week. Uh, let's just go there. Philippians 3, verse 20. It says, for our conversation is in heaven. From hence we look for our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Our conversation is in heaven. From where we look 
for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Look, Jesus is in heaven. He's sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for us. He's not going to be removed out of heaven. So when our conversations is in heaven, we look for him. That means we need to change our minds so that we can speak heavenly things. Our conversations is in heaven. Why? Because our thoughts are in heaven. Because our vision is in heaven. Because our hearing is in heaven. Do you know that God speaks in everything? You can watch a Batman movie and God will speak to you. Oh, no, pastor. I mean, one of my dad's greatest topics that he spoke about, he received in the IMAX theater. But other people are like, oh, no, you can't go to the IMAX. This is devil's big screen. <laughs> Look, if you look for the devil, you're going to find the devil in everything and in everyone. See, this is a problem. We have so many devils in our lives because we are constantly looking for them. <laughs> start looking for God and start finding him in everything. Start looking for Jesus and you'll find him in everything. Uh. Okay, so our conversations is in heaven. From hence, we also look for our Savior. So our conversations uh, is in heaven. Looking. Ha, let me just remove this. So our conversations is in heaven where we are looking ha, for Jesus. And let's just go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. It says, what the eyes not seen, what the ear has not heard. So, we look for Jesus because there are things in him that we have not seen yet. Our conversations starts off with what we see and what we hear. So we are looking and we are listening for Jesus in heavenly places because what happens next is who shall change our vile bodies that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. So we are turning into him. Turning into the very image of Christ. Now, how do we turn into the image of Christ? By what we look at, what our conversation is. He says, Be holy as He is holy, be holy in all manner of conversations. <laughs> We shall change our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Whew, this is beautiful. Our conversations. What is your conversation? Now, practically, we are still on this earth. We still have business to do. We still have people to see. We still have problems to sort. So how, how do we change our conversations? Okay, let's go to Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 verse 1, he says, And you has he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as... Huh, others. So we are a building. Ne? You are God's building, but take heed how you build thereupon. With what do we build? 
We build with the same thing that we break down. But God, who is rich in mercy, <laughs> for his great love wherewith he has loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has he quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Can I get an amen on that? Ah, that deserves an amen. And has raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. <laughs> That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ unto good works. Amen. Man, our conversations in time past caused death. So death and life is in the power of the? He that uses it shall eat the fruit thereof. This is not rocket science. What you say is what you're going to get. Continue repeating the same thing and you will get the same result. Continue saying the same thing, you'll continually having the same things in your life. Now when David stands up and he says, ah, praise the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Praise you, the Lord. Even when my enemies are camping round about me, <laughs> my heart shall not fear, because he understands that by the fruits of his mouth, God shall reward him. By the fruits of his mouth, he is building up his life. Whew. Now let's go to 1 Peter 2. I think we are, we are nearing the end. And then we're going to call for the fire. <laughs> 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2, it says, Therefore, laying aside, wherefore, laying aside all matters, all guile, all hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speaking, <laughs> as newborn babes desiring the sere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious, you also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God <laughs> by Christ Jesus. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and that he that believe on him should not be confounded. Ah, thank you, Lord. Sure. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Unto you, therefore, which believe. Not to everyone. Unto you who believe. He is precious. But unto them which is a disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And the stone of stumbling and the rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto you were also appointed, but you are, say, I am. What are you? Ah. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. <laughs> Woo! This is good stuff. This is good stuff. Which in times past were not a people, but now you are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from, lust, from fleshly lust, 
which war against the soul, having your conversation honest amongst the Gentiles, that whereas you speak against you as evildoers, they may be your good works which they shall behold and glorify God in the day of visitation. Ha! Yo, 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 yo. All right. Having your conversation honest amongst the Gentiles. Those will uh, looks at you and thinks this is not, this is foolishness because they are requiring wisdom of the world. Having your conversation honest amongst them so that they will see your good works and that God may be glorified in the day of visitation. What is the day of visitation? What is the day of the Lord? The day of Jesus Christ. If you go search for it, it is the day of fire. The day of the Lord is a day of fire. <laughs> the day of Jesus Christ, the appearing of Jesus Christ is a day of fire. You are the temple. Thank you, Arthur. I have one temple. You are the temple? Amen. Amen. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5. You are the temple of God. I remember when I was in school, way back, I don't think we did it in high school, it was primary school, there was a song, building up the temple, building up, building up the temple of the Lord. And then we start singing, as I have it, come and help us, mm, come and help us. Can't even remember the song. But how amazing <laughs> is it thinking of it now at a young age, it was already clear that you have to build up the temple. Your body is the temple of God, you have to build it up. You are the temple of God, you have to build it up. With what are you building? Look, we always, we always fall back on if God doesn't build, ah, why do we even care? So it's like God must build everything. <laughs> Look, faith without works is dead. It's beautiful. Are you in 1 Thessalonians 5? All right, let's knock this one. But of those times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction come upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that it should overtake you as a thief, but you are children of light and children of the day, and we are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in night and they that be drunken be drunken at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith mm. and love for an helmet and the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed unto us wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we should live together with him. Okay. So, get this. The day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. You don't see a thief come in. That's why he's a thief. A robber is one that overpowers you and beats you, and you know you've been robbed. But a thief, ah, man, you don't know. You only find out later. It's like, ah, there was a TV here. <laughs> There's no more. <laughs> or you get out in South Africa and you get to your car and your wheels are gone. Then you realize you have been stolen from. The thief was there. So the day of the Lord, hmm, okay, get this. The day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. The manifestation, I wrote it down, the revealing, the fire. God doesn't send you an agenda. Say, on the 16th of April, be ready. 
the fire of testing shall cometh down upon it, the earth. <laughs> you have been warned. <laughs> no. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put it out here because I have felt this and I know this word is true. When the fire of God comes, it comes without warning. It comes without appointment to reveal and to manifest what you have been building with. And yeah, man, sometimes we just take this as, why are you doing this to me, God? Why? And count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and temptations, for it works the perfecting of your faith. Amen. What I speak to say, many fall temptations when the fire comes to try it. <laughs> okay, so be holy. <laughs> as he is holy in all manner of conversations. Verse 11, wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor amongst you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sakes and be at peace amongst yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded and support the weak. Be patient toward all men, hallelujah. Why is that in there? Whew. See that no one render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both yourselves and to all men. Sure. Rejoice evermore. Hmm. Pray without ceasing. In everything. <laughs> you look at me now and say, Yes. Then we come to Wednesday. And then thanks is the last thing in your vocabulary. Look, I, I've, I've made up my mind. The word of God is true. I've realized that I have built in my life with a hay, wood, and stubble. And I have felt the fire. I know what it feels like. So why would I go back and build with the same materials? So when he says, in everything... Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. <laughs> it means that when Paul writes in, in Romans 8, it says, All things, all things are working together for your good, for them that love God. All right, that is truth. But I find myself in difficult situations. And I've decided to say this, even this, is working together for my good. And then I can rejoice. Yes. Knowing that if I put my trust in God, He cannot let me down. I'm not standing back and saying, God, do your thing. I'm standing and saying thank you, and then I'm doing my thing. Yes, guys. This is beautiful. Quench not the spirit and despise not prophecy. Prove all things and hold fast that which is good and abstain. Hey, abstain from all appearances of evil. And the very God of peace will sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, my goodness. Faithful is he that calls you, and will also will do it. And then he goes on, brethren, pray for us. <laughs> Faithful is he that call you, and that will also do it. Now, if we go to John 5, uh, this is where the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all those wonderful people started arguing with Jesus. And I want to pick up from here. Oh, from where, 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 where? John 9, 5, 19. Oh. And 17, but Jesus answered him, My father works unto you, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but he also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, 
but what he sees the Father do. For what things whatsoever he does, these also does the Son likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that himself do. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Jesus says, I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I see the Father say. So, let's go back to this part. We need to speak the same things. How on earth are we all going to be able to speak the same things? Because we all have the mind of Christ. We all have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. So if we step into the same mind of Christ, we will start speaking the same things as Christ has spoken. So Ephesians 5, I'm almost done. Wake up your neighbor and say, hey, he's landing. Not crash landing, ma'am. I am I'm a good lander. I can, I can do it goodly. Ephesians 5, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding that what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, where is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of God. All right. So be holy as, I, as he is holy in all manner of conversations. And our conversations is in heavenly places where we are looking for Jesus so that we can see him, so that we can hear him, so that we can speak. So now we have to understand that giving, um, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, and giving thanks always for all things, submitting yourselves one to God another. Hallelujah. Let's go to Colossians 3. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear... <laughs> Then we shall also appear with him in glory. How does he appear? Ah, oh, man, all these things are going to come together now. Mortify, therefore, the members which are upon the earth. Ah, oh, and then he carries on. Verse 8. But now also put off these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. I see everyone's looking at me, not reading. Slander. Slander. Filthy. Communication. Put these things off. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Wherefore there is neither Greek nor Jew, <laughs> circumcision or uncircumcision, all these barbarian, scathian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. <laughs> and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. My dear brothers and sisters, this morning, let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are called in one body and be ye thankful and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and whatsoever you do in word or deed do it all in the name of our Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. And the next one is, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as is fit unto the Lord. Boom. Ha! <laughs> I just want to catch you. Anyway, 
Verse 15, I'm going to get you to this point. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And then admonish one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace unto the Lord. How? The conversations that we have with one another. Are we lifting one another up or are we breaking one another down? We are there to build one another up, to edify one another. With the same words that we build someone else up, we break another one down. In your life, what are you building with? Sure, 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 sure. Okay, okay. So our conversations is very important. In uh, Genesis 5, you find the story of Enoch. And Enoch says, the word says, Enoch walked with God, and he was no more. So meaning he was suddenly walking and then just vanished. God was pleased with him. Why? Because his temple was tested with fire, and it was found pure. Why? How? (laughs) That walk, if you go to the original meaning, and I just did a bit of a a research on this. It says, the word walk is the biblical expression for fellowship and obedience with God that results in divine favor. It refers to the manner of a, a life of a person living in the nameless nearness, nearness to God. Enoch walked with God, a walk of dedication and devoted. His walk lived up to his name. Enoch means dedicated. So the original walk there is to have continual conversation. Enoch had continual conversation with God. And he was into the new realm. So our lives. (laughs) Look, if Hebrews talks about it in Hebrews 12, it says, if we are Composed by such a great cloud of witnesses. Where are they? They are still living. They are still moving. They are still pushing us forward. Then we get to Hebrews 13. Let's let's go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13 says, Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels. Now he carries on, verse 17. It says, Obey them that have rule over you. Verse 18, pray for us. Verse 20, the God of peace that brought again the dead from our Lord Jesus Christ, that shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect unto every good work to do his will working in you that you is well-pleasing in his sight through Christ Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And I beseech you, brethren, to suffer the word of exhortation, for I have written a letter in a few words. Ha. Huh. Know that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, with whom he shall shortly come. And salute them that have rule over you, and all the saints, and grace be with you. Ha. Huh. Grace be with you. Now go to Hebrews 3. So wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the holy calling, (laughs) consider the apostle, the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who has builded the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that builds all things is God. Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast to their confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Ha. Wow. That's good. That is good. So Christ, God is the one that builds. And we also know that God is a consuming fire. Sure. 
So the fire that we sometimes run away from <laughs> is actually the fire of God. Just stand still and let him remove the hay we didn't stop. You will not be destroyed. Even though the house is broken down. <laughs> your foundation is in Christ. As long as your foundation is in Christ, you have the opportunity to then build again. So conversations. How do we, how do we go about conversations? Do we just talk about heaven and just talk about Jesus and God and the Holy Ghost all day? No, we still have a life to live. We still have things. You can't walk into the band and tell them, <laughs> funny things about Jesus and they make them give you all their money. No, it's not going to work like that. That's not how it works. All right, everyone's very quiet. So Jesus was faced with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and go look at how he responds to them every time. Especially with a woman caught in the act of adultery. He says, he without sin cast the first stone. He didn't point them out and prophesied all their sins to them. I mean, it could have. But he just said, no, this is it. Grace works in a different way. But try and taste me. See if you can get past this. You can't. You cannot defeat grace. When Jesus, uh, Matthew 3, 4, 5, 6, I love those, um, happens where he gets baptized, he gets filled with spirit, being led into the desert, his first sermon is the blessed ones, which is lovely. And then you get to Matthew 6, which I love. Don't be afraid. Don't be worried. Don't take thought about all these things. God knows you. <laughs> he will take care of you. But when he went into the desert, the first thing that the tempter said to him, Hey, I see you've been uh, fasting for 40 days. <laughs> if you are hungry, man, you are the son of God. If you are the son of God. Turn these stones into bread. And Jesus answers him and he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Because then you take it further, John 10, he says, I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. <laughs> His word is the bread of life. So the word of God became flesh and it dwelt amongst us. So this word is inside of us today. So when we have conversations... If we have the word of God, we have living word. We don't have a dead word. <laughs> now, how to bring this down just to one thing. Um, Enoch walked with God and he was no more. How did you get saved? As you have received, so walk in him. Your conversations... God is everything. He is all in all. And if I can just, let's say that's God, all right? Because that is you. I don't know how to draw God in that sense. Everything is in God. Then we have Jesus, which is the mediator, the go-between, the link, the door. <laughs> he is everything. But he gave us now the spirit so that we can have a direct access to God, and we have the Spirit inside of us, so we have the Holy Spirit. If Jesus says, I only say what I hear the Father say, how are you going to hear what the Father says? Jesus says, I'm going to send you the Spirit, and He's going to tell you things that I tell Him. So I think we are skipping the part and we're trying to get our communications directly from God where he says, hey, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Walk with him. Talk with him. How many of you have talking with the Holy Spirit this morning? One, two, three, four. I know we talk with God. Uh, I heard a song lately, Talking with God. It, it, yeah. In a sense, it makes sense. You can talk to God. You can tell God how much you love Him. You can sing praises to God. But our conversations is with the Holy Spirit. 
If we want heavenly conversations, it is with the Holy Spirit. If we edify one another, it is with these conversations. If we build one another up, it is with the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Our working power is the Holy Spirit. Our gift is the Holy Spirit. We have been enriched in everything by Christ Jesus, by the Spirit that He gave us. Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Now we are a city of the Lord. We are called Zion. We are a holy temple. We are being built up continually. 